earlier today, Skyrim got a 12 gigabyte new update and basically a new DLC as paid mods have returned to Skyrim. This is the long awaited creations update. I covered the fact that this was coming in a past video and there's really just a lot to unpack here. Because not only does this have a huge impact on Skyrim and its future, but Skyrim itself also just generally got an update here. Some things about the game are different. In response to paid mods, we're seeing some mod authors already pull their mods and it's pretty likely that this all comes to Starfield as well, which has some pretty big implications for the future. But now in Skyrim, after downloading the new update, you'll find a completely new menu labeled Creations, and this alone is honestly a giant change, as this new menu includes both paid and free content in a single area. So you're gonna have some of the totally new creations that just launched earlier today here with this update, but also all of the old Creation Club content will be available here, and just all of the general mods. That entire mods section is now inclusive in the Creation menu. So downloading mods in-game and managing your load order is always going to be handled here now. There was a UI overhaul to go along with this and you can actually find the same reflected on the Bethesda.net website. And to commemorate this launch, several new paid mods were released earlier today, all created by community members who are now known as verified creators. And right off the bat, there is a ton of new content here if you're willing to pay for it. The East Empire expansion adds in a fully voiced new questline where you can work to build up the East Empire in Skyrim. As you go through the quest, you'll gain unique benefits as a result, like these trade outposts being established all around Skyrim, and the East Empire itself being able to transport or even sell your junk for you. As you progress through the quest, your rewards will get better and better, and this is all fully voiced. In short, if you are to gather and then store all the items you wish to take from a place such as this, but in addition to this, there are some simpler additions, like tougher and even new dungeons added into the game, there's a totally new set of armor with unique effects, and even two new player homes were added. But a couple of other more substantial mods, like a new follower featuring 1200 lines of custom voice dialogue and even a gun, because yeah, Skyrim has guns now. I'm working on a full deep dive and review of all of these new listings, specifically comparing them to free alternatives so you can see if they're actually worth your money, so hey, get subscribed for that video. Although, as quick as many of you will be to just dismiss these as more paid mods, this is an entirely different system than Creation Club, and it has the potential to be far better. Right off the bat, things are just formatted differently now. With Creation Club, modders are basically being hired by Bethesda to make paid mods with Bethesda. In Creation Club, authors would pitch ideas to Bethesda who would approve them and set the price of them. In Creation Club, creators were paid upfront for their work, there was no commission or royalty. They were basically just contracted employees working for Bethesda. But now, now we have this entirely new verified creator program, and this is live, you can apply to it, I'll have a link down below if you're interested, and instead of working for Bethesda, it seems like you're very much so more working with Bethesda now. You're largely just applying to gain access to the storefront, because once accepted, you could kinda just create whatever mod you want. There are a few conditions, like the mod has to be original, you're not allowed to post already released mods for sale on the store, your mod can't be dependent on another mod to work, and a nice inclusion by Bethesda, your mod can't be made using generative AI, so they blocked that out right off the bat. But outside of that, with this new paid mod system, you could kinda do whatever you want as an author. Which is why we are already seeing content that simply wouldn't be possible with the old Creation Club rules. Take Katya for example, they have 1200 lines of custom dialogue for this follower. That's 1200 more lines of dialogue than what was available in Creation Club because Creation Club did not allow any custom voiced content. And even as a better example, the entire East Empire expansion feels far more like an actual DLC for the the game. This is a full-fledged questline that has custom voice acting that sounds professional grade, and it's actually adding in useful new features that you unlock progressively as you do some of the quests. Again, I am working on a full review, but to me, this is the best example of how paid mods could actually be kinda cool out of all of the new releases. And in preparation for this video, I spoke with several creators who described that this new program is far better compared to Creation Club. In general, way more is possible. You're actually able to do voice acting now, something the matter? You can have large scale spanning new world mods, but you still are getting the benefits of working with Bethesda. Many Creation Club authors praised in the past how helpful Bethesda was during the development process with Creation Club. And it seems like a lot of that's continuing here, with Bethesda actively supporting those creating creations and even doing the quality assurance on these paid releases. It's not entirely clear how this process works, but it basically seems like Bethesda handles a lot of the QA work on each of these paid mods, which of course is huge for individual mod authors who really wouldn't have the resources for that otherwise. And what is easily going to be the biggest change going from the past Creation Club to this new Creations or Verified Creator system is the lack of updates. 
Previously, when we would get new Creation Club releases, the game overall would have to update and break a ton of mods. Now, that won't need to be a thing. Going forward, new creations can just be listed on this storefront without our mods breaking each time new things are listed. Another really big distinction here is pay. Instead of just getting a lump sum upfront like they did with Creation Club, now creators will actually set the price of their mods and get a cut of the profits, earning royalties for each mod sold. So let's say you love King Gath for his work on Sim Settlements, you'll now be able to directly support him by purchasing the East Empire expansion. And that's going to apply to each of the authors and teams tied to each release. So of course, this will completely change the mod dynamic. Now mod authors can make way more or way less money and have a clear incentive to promote their work. The more copies they sell, the more money they'll make. And if enough people buy a creation, there's a very real possibility that a mod author could go full time or hey, even launch an entire studio creation content for this, and yeah, that actually already happened. Because King Gath, the modder behind Sim Settlements, announced earlier today that they're launching their own game studio with King Gath Creations. Working with some developers from Sim Settlements, they're going to be working on several smaller scale projects with an eventual goal of a full-fledged game. The first release from this team is the East Empire expansion, but of course they do have plans for more and all the while they will be continuing to maintain and potentially release new free mods as well as creating new paid ones. And this is where a program like this can get really exciting. Teams of very talented modders working on this full time or even just with a budget, like being able to pay voice actors is huge. It dramatically increases the potential of what we can see from Skyrim or even Starfield modding in the future. But honestly, that was kind of the rose-tinted glass look. Those were all of the good things about this new addition to Skyrim, and there definitely are some downsides as well. Right off the bat, some mods are broken. Many of your favorite SKSE-dependent mods will need an update, and for some, this may take months as Skyrim is a very old game now and many mod authors have moved on. Although, on the bright side, Bethesda did work with the Skyrim Script Extender team ahead of this release, so SKSE is already updated. And if a dress library gets updated shortly, a lot of mods will immediately start working. Although unfortunately, there definitely is some extra breakage and actually on the console side this time. Due to this new menu being added, a lot of the existing UI mods are broken. So there are tons of reports of crashing, glitching out, and just not being able to edit your load order at all for console users. This again, due to outdated UI mods that will need to be updated. But what I think is easily the worst aspect of this overall is including all of the paid and free content in the same menu. So when you want to go download the latest and greatest free mod for Skyrim, you're going to have to scroll past a bunch of paid mods, and this will likely only become worse as more and more creators join the program and start posting their own paid mods. Hopefully at some point modders will come to the rescue and add a mod that will actually separate the free and paid content into separate menus like it was before, but there are also just hard limitations with creations. When installed, these will block achievements from triggering, so now of course you can just mod that out, but achievements working was a notable feature of Creation Club that seems to not be carried over to creations. It's this weird situation where you can buy a mod that feels very official, but you can't actually get achievements with it. Creations are still not allowed to have custom content on PlayStation, so this is not going to be a rejoice moment for PlayStation users. And the overall mod space limit for Skyrim was unchanged. It seems like creations won't count towards that space limit, but you still only have 5 gigabytes for free mods. And of course, this all costs money. I haven't really focused on the prices of these new creations thus far, because apparently it's all changing in a week. Right now, all of the creations cost between 500 to 700 points, which is about 5 to $7. And right now, you are using the old Creation Club credits to buy these. But Bethesda also revealed that with the debut of creations, we'll be adjusting the names and pricing of creation credit packs effective December 12th. So things may get more or less expensive. We actually don't know right now. I have to imagine more expensive, but again, no real idea. I imagine most of the creations will remain about the same price, so each of these running you around $5 or so. But there definitely is a concern among the community of a lot of mod authors out there just turning to paid mods full time instead of ever releasing free mods. We obviously don't know how how much this will happen going forward. Creation Club was pretty exclusive and didn't really expand that much outside of the original group of creators, but this time around it seems like Bethesda is welcoming many more people into the program to really flesh out this storefront, and some mod authors have already taken to protesting this change. Simon Magus removed all of their mods from Bethesda.net following this release, mentioning how they won't 
participate in a two-tiered system of paid and free mods on the same storefront. And I wouldn't be shocked if other mod authors follow suit. Simon Magus has a ton of phenomenal mods, and if you're playing on Xbox, there's a pretty decent chance that you had one of his mods installed. So this will impact your load order because, again, that mod's just gone now. But like I mentioned earlier, Skyrim also just got a general update with this one, and some of these changes are pretty big. ESL files had their capacity doubled, so now they can support twice as much content, which is huge. More modders resources have been added and the creation kit updated to reflect this, but also just a ton of individual improvements for consumers. Both ultra wide and Steam Deck support were added for Skyrim, Bethesda has finally added in the ability to natively copy and paste into the console, along with a variety of new console commands and even some new editor functionality. I'm not going to go over this individually because I think for a lot of people this won't be useful, but if you're a power user, there's some really cool new abilities and functions here, as well as just a boatload of bug fixes. Not to take an unfair shot at Starfield, but this Skyrim update had more bug fixes than the past several Starfield updates put together. But when it does come to this paid mod system, it is all but confirmed that this is coming to Starfield. Bethesda hasn't officially said the words, but they basically did at the same time. So Starfield already has in-game purchases listed on its ESRB rating, and it even mentions a purchasable currency in its EULA known as Creation Credits. And notably, not the old Creation Club credits, but the new name with Creation Credits. And the biggest confirmation in my eyes was how on their post detailing how mod support would be coming early next year, they referenced Starfield mods as creations. So it'll likely share this exact same system with paid and free mods all being available on one storefront. And honestly, my personal thoughts on this new system are pretty mixed. I'm definitely more on board with paid mods than most people out there. I support mod authors getting paid, and if this system can really lead to more mod authors going full-time and creating truly high-quality content for Skyrim, and eventually Starfield, I am fully on board. The free market nature will hopefully reward good content as lazy or overpriced content will see less sales and in turn the author making less money. But as of right now, it's all just one big hypothetical. Maybe the storefront just gets flooded with low quality cash grabs and immediately becomes forgettable. I also have to imagine compatibility will become a large issue in the future. It seems like the storefront's just a lot more freeform and I imagine two paid mods being incompatible with one another and then somebody buying both will be a problem that happens to one of you watching right now. I am incredibly happy that the days of constant updates breaking mods are gone, I think. So now when new paid content is posted, it'll just be added dynamically and you won't have to update the entire game each and every time. And with how much more open the system is for creators, I would almost be fully on board, except there's one massive drawback and that is the combination of the storefronts. Like for PC users, this entire system is basically basically ignorable. If the vast majority of Skyrim mods are updated in a week or two and you could resume those heavily modded playthroughs, all will pretty much be good. You could never think about paid mods again and your game won't update so it won't bother you. But if you're playing on console, you have to think about paid mods because if you want to go download a free one, you're going to have to scroll past a bunch of paid ones and I hate that. If you're somebody who wants to remain a free user, never wants to buy a mod in their life, I can see how this is going to get really old really fast. All of the featured mods are probably going to be paid because Bethesda Bethesda wants to make money. I would have to imagine that over time, people are going to have to start relying more and more on other resources outside of just visiting the store to find the best new mods to download. And I'll be really curious to see what kind of impact this has on released mods. Do we see a lot of higher quality free mods just opting to go paid instead? So my final takeaway on these Skyrim creations is it's really all just a big maybe right now. The system itself really has the potential to produce actual quality content. Skyrim creations could absolutely succeed where Creation Club failed. But as it exists right now, it's really just a system with problems, and it'll take quite a bit of time to see how much stuff is actually worth it on this storefront, and you have to imagine that there's a ton of users that are going to be really annoyed with these changes in the short term, so hopefully at some point next year we'll have a better understanding of what the Skyrim Paid Mods 3.0 really is. But if you are interested in more free Skyrim mods, get subscribed as I'm going to be showcasing several alternatives soon. 